What's up everyone, this is your Bannikeen Isaac speaking, and we are back with another Bannikeen Isaac video. This is going to be a different kind of video, this is going to be one of the Bannikeen Isaac real talks, so let's just get right back into this. Delta 8, uh, you guys got to be pretty careful about all this stuff, you guys can read through this, if you want I'm going to leave a link in the description, but uh, yeah, Delta 8. Pretty harmful sometimes, but let's just read some of this. We walked out of the shop with three Delta 8 products. Two of them turned out to be fake. But where do these products come from? Who makes them? How do cons consumers know they're not filled with harmful contaminants, heavy metals, or even a potentially deadly addict additive like vitamin E oil? The answer, they don't. Here's why. As medical and recreational cannabis was legalized, each state included a regulatory system that determines what, how, where, and by whom all the various cannabis products are produced and sold. In California, special labels appear on products grown or manufactured by state licensed companies which adhere to strict safety and potency rules. That's not the case with any unlicensed store selling Delta 8 products. So, no rules, not right. There are no rules around how or where these shops get their products that allow sketchy brand less products with no safety testing or traceability to be sold. Now I'm not going to read all this, all this crap like this, I mean, whatever. As you can see here, there can be le legitimate Delta 8 products at these stores of course, but it's not clear exactly how state regulators would or could stop contaminated Delta 8 products from being sold at random retail stores and strip malls. Some heavy metals and contaminants have already been found in Delta 8 products tested by the U.S. Cannabis Council and Industry Trade Group. A recent leafy investigation into the safety of Delta 8 products found a number of reasons to take care before purchasing. As you see, it's got a whole page of this stuff. A whole page. Now, I don't know which Delta 8 products they have looked at or tested or anything. I have not read all this. But, uh, as you see, they have cartridges. They have, looks like some nasty knockoff, uh, flaming hot stuff for Cheetos. No, that looks pretty nasty, honestly. Just, uh, I can just imagine like uh, flaming Hot Cheetos with some uh, weed just like a weed taste you know like just all over them which is nasty disgusting now my wife went out and bought some uh, Delta 8 uh, gummies it says CBD on them I don't uh, smoke or do anything like that. I uh, used to when I was younger, because you know when we're younger we do stupid things. Now uh, I do have trouble sleeping some nights, um, especially whenever I'm not working like now and I don't get out all my energy. I just have extra energy. I had um, growing up I had ADHD, so you know I had a little bit of extra energy. Oops, sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but I had extra energy, so. I just, I can't sleep sometimes, you know, so my wife went out and bought, uh, it was, this, uh, Delta 8 gummies, uh, they said CBD on them, I will show a picture at the end of this video, but, uh, I took them, I took five of them, you're only supposed to take one every couple hours, I took five, because I didn't read the stupid package, my dumb fault. But later that night, after I went to bed, it was like three or four hours, maybe even five hours after I had taken them. I woke up, and my heart was racing. So I, I got up. I thought maybe I was just having some kind of weird panic attack or something like that, you know, because I felt uh, uneased about everything. I didn't really like the feeling of it. So I just went to the kitchen to go get me a drink of water and calm down or whatever. I then everything 
felt like, uh, do you know how, like, sometimes, well, I don't, I don't really know, I, it must be, might be a little old for, uh, some of you guys, but, uh, the internet would buffer or something like that, I don't know, some people still have bad internet, so, I guess it still applies, but, it would buffer, and, or you can watch some movies, and it would slowly buffer or whatever, or in video games where it would lag, that's what I felt like, I felt like I was lagging, like, that's how I felt like my heart was doing, that's how I felt my hands were doing when I was trying to do stuff, I tried to get to the room, back to our bedroom quickly, but it was a little hard, um, because everything felt like I was lagging, I don't know how much time it took me to get in here, I walked normal, so I'm pretty sure it was just, you know, like a minute, or less than that, probably like 30 seconds, actually, to get back in here, but whenever I got on the bed, my speech started to get worse, and I had to wake up my wife and tell her to call 911, and whenever I told her to call 911, obviously she was scared, and frightened, very frightened, I'm just gonna scroll through this so you guys can look at some stuff, and I'll leave it, uh, here, but she was very frightened, she was able to get up, she couldn't really understand me, or, I don't know if she could really understand me, or she just didn't know what was going on, but she goes, trying to understand me, trying to get me to calm down, which, I was pretty calm for, you know, the circumstance. It's just, it was hard for me to speak. I was going in and out of consciousness, and everything kept going black. And then all of a sudden, my heart would race again, and it'd shoot like a shot of adrenaline. I'd wake up. I was still afraid. I was uh, having like a panic attack. So I said, everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. And I was patting my my stomach and my chest, you know, just to tell myself, then, I don't know what happened, but I got into this state to where I kept on doing it over and over again, I kept on hitting my stomach going, everything's going to be alright, everything's going to be alright, everything's going to be alright, and I was stuck in a loop, I got stuck in that loop, and it, it felt like forever, but it was probably about, I don't know, uh, four and a half minutes to five minutes of me just saying that over and over again with my hand uncontrollably just hitting my stomach and it would have hurt if I could feel it because it was it was pretty hard because I couldn't control the uh, the pressure at which I was hitting myself because sometimes it'd be okay and other times uh, my arm would go quicker than what it did before and it hit me harder I can just feel it, like hit the air out of me but I couldn't stop talking so it just, it made me, like, out of breath, and it made me even more worried than what I was before, obviously, because I couldn't stop. It felt like hours had passed. I have no clue the time limit of everything, but shortly after I stopped, you know, my little loop of bullcrap because I went out of consciousness, the, uh, let me see, the paramedics arrived shortly after that, but it felt like forever, it felt like hours, but I know it wasn't hours, because, um, obviously it wouldn't have been hours, you know, but it felt like hours, and then they finally arrived, and there was a new guy, like, the, uh, professional guy had to kind of teach the new guy a little bit, so that made me even more worried, but they hooked up the, uh, heart monitor, thing on me, the little portable one they have, they hooked it on me, they checked all my vitals and stuff like that, and they injected me with a lot of stuff to kind of calm me down and to slow my heart rate because I was going to end up having a heart attack, and it was really scary, and I, I thought it was the end, I honestly, I thought I was going to die, uh, but to make that pain stop and everything else, I, I would have gladly went away at that moment, you know. It's just, it was awful. I felt like I was dying when the, when the uh, paramedic asked it what was going on, how I felt. I told him, I feel like I'm dying. And 
it was just, uh, it was hard, you know, and I didn't think I was going to make it through it, but, uh, they, they got me out, they got me in an ambulance, and by that time, since all that stuff has gotten to, was getting into my system, all the adrenaline and stuff was starting to slow down a little bit, but it was still there, I still felt awful, and I went out of consciousness for a little bit, and that was a little bit shortly after we left the house in ambulance, but they went a couple miles, and then I, um, uh, I woke up, and then I went back out again just for a little bit, and then I woke up when I was pretty much getting into the hospital, it's really blurry from, like, as all we were leaving my house to the hospital and getting into the hospital, it was pretty much blurry, I just remember bits and fragments of it, my wife was not there, she was not in the ambulance, because obviously we had to get home sometime, it was like, I don't know what time at night, to four or five in the morning, it was like, okay, it started about 11 at night, then about four or five in the morning, is whenever I left, but I got into the bed or wherever at the hospital, they helped me, because I couldn't walk, and I couldn't do anything, and they hooked up everything to me, made sure I wasn't going to have a heart attack, the nurses and stuff came there, checked on me, the doctor and the nurses both told me that uh, I was lucky to be alive, um, they, t they asked what I took and everything, on the paper they just said like cannabis overdose or something like that, they said they was going to put that, they don't really know what was in there without having the gummies themselves, but they said that uh, a lot of these places that sell CBD and cannabis gummies and stuff like that, some of them are fake and some of them are really bad for you, and they said that you can overdose on CBD actually, so be very careful with that if you guys do like CBD or whatever, you can overdose on it and it can kill you. That's from what the doctor said. I never, I never knew I can overdose on CBD or anything like that. And they don't really know if I overdosed on the CBD or whether excess, you know, was in the gummies. They didn't do any kind of a test other than a drug test. And I failed it. This stuff was bought at a gas station in Indiana. Over near Washington, Indiana, actually. Something that was bought at a gas station almost killed me. And it made me fail a drug test. So if I would have had to, like have time off of work for this, I would have been fired because there was marijuana in my system. And I don't smoke. I don't take edibles. I don't do anything like that. I'm pretty boring. I don't like stuff like that anymore. And I thought, you know, CBD, uh, big whoop, it's going to help me sleep. It's going to, you know, help. It's not going to do anything bad. But I took those gummies and I risked my life. You could do the same. If you go out and buy Delta 8 gummies from a gas station... They could be the last thing you ever ingest. I'm not saying that you will die. I'm not saying it's a high chance. I'm saying there is a chance, though. My wife took them. She was perfectly fine. I don't know if it's because uh, the weight difference in us or what. I I don't know. Or it could have been just something weird with me. There's, there's just no way of me knowing really why. Doctors didn't really care why. They just cared what was in my system, what I took, and if I was going to be okay or not. After they got me, you know, settled down after a couple hours and they got everything and injected me, more fluids and stuff like that and everything. It was, um, you know, out of their care, really, they didn't, out of their hands. But for the next two or three days, actually, no, it was longer than that, about almost a whole week. But the next two to three days was the worst. Um, I still felt the after effects of it. I still felt pretty bad. 
My wife even felt off. She didn't feel very good. She felt kind of sick, just like me. But obviously, she wasn't didn't feel as bad as me because uh, she didn't almost die. So at least I don't think so. I don't think anything happened that it was awful inside of our body or anything. I hopefully hopefully she didn't almost die and not, us not even know. But yeah, I had a near death experience because of gummies from a gas station. Legal gummies. And it's just insane. I don't know if you guys know about spice and or fake bake or whatever you want to call it. They used to sell it at like uh gas stations and JC cigarette outlets, stuff like that. They used to sell that over the counter too. They didn't care, they just sold it to you. And now it's illegal. So just be careful what you guys buy, you know. It's, you don't ever really know. And the back of these things, like the ingredients and stuff like that, a lot of them don't have a really long list. They don't show very much. They do not, they don't tell you. They don't tell you what's in here. A lot of these places that first come up, like Delta 8 and stuff like that, they don't have to tell you. They, they find loopholes. They don't have to tell you everything that goes in them. I mean, eventually the law catches up with them, and, you know, good job, law, but by the time the law catches up with them, you can lose your life. Someone you love can lose your life, or you can lose your job. I mean, you can lose a lot. You can lose your life. You can lose your job. You can lose sobriety. I mean, if you know, you're that bad with some stuff. I mean, some people are uh, addicts with some edible type stuff and they think, you know, CBD is just a nice little thing they can take and it's, it's not. Um, it can mess you up and send you back to a bad road just because it's got uh, marijuana pretty much in it. It'll make you fail a drug test, so it obviously has some stuff in it. But I know, you know, marijuana is supposed to be not be addictive, but people do get addicted to the feeling. And some people are just bad addicts. Guys, all I'm trying to say is just be careful. This uh, really actually means a lot to me to tell you this because, you know, I almost died with it. I almost died over a gummy. And... It just, it's awful. So, uh, do me a favor. Just look out. Uh, I even called the uh, hospital later on and asked them if they gave me anything that would make me feel off for the next couple of days. And they told me no. But uh, the woman told me a story that her daughter, she smokes, you know, vape carts or whatever. And she went to some place that was where weed is actually legal. But she went and picked out a little thing for her vape. I don't know what it really was. I I didn't really talk to her that much about it. But it turned out to be weed. And they didn't even tell her that. She just picked out one that looked cool. It didn't have, you know, uh, obviously the pot plant and stuff on it. Or she probably wouldn't have bought it. Because she was a stickler, you know, didn't like that stuff. But she went and bought it, and they didn't tell her it was weed, you know, marijuana. They didn't tell her that. They just gave it to her. So, they don't have to tell you. There are laws and loopholes where even the uh, people that are selling it to you do not have to tell you anything. Unless, you, like, you ask or whatever. And I, I don't even know if there's laws that make them tell you like that. But they don't have to tell you. They just sell it to you. A lot of people don't care if, you know, uh, we die. So, just be careful out there, guys. Be weary of Delta 8. And be weary of anything that, you know, you can buy like that. You don't ever know if it's something that uh, can kill you or not. You don't know if this is going to be the last thing you ever try. Just, uh... Be careful, guys. Um, this is your Bandit King Isaac. I love you guys. Be weary.
please be very wary of this. I mean, I'm all for pro-choice and everything like that. If you guys want to go and try this, I mean, go ahead. I don't, I mean, it's your choice. I don't, I don't care what you guys want to do. You guys want to smoke weed or whatever, I mean, cool. Nah, I don't have anything against you or anything like that. I'm just trying to give you guys a head up. I did uh, five gummies in this little packet and I almost died. That could be you and you could be alone and not be able to call for help or do anything. Because if I was alone, I wouldn't have like the thought capacity to really know where my, th my phone was probably and I would have probably died. So I have to thank my wife. I love her. Even though she tried to kill me with gummies. <laughs> I'm just playing. Uh, she didn't know that that would happen. She bought them from a gas station over in Washington. Or near Washington. And she brought them back home. This is Washington, Indiana, mind you. Um, Indiana's against marijuana and everything like that. It's probably going to take forever for them to legalize it. But she bought them. Legally, obviously. And... They made me fill a drug test. They almost killed me. So be very wary of this stuff. You can lose a job. You can lose a life. Uh, just tell everyone you know. If you guys want to read this, I will let it in the link in the description. Or you can just pause this somewhere. I'm sure that you can read this somehow. But just be careful, guys. Alright. Love you. Bye.